and this photo, we see that the rail track is bent. Why it is so? This is the effect of heat. Naturally, when they made this track, it was winter time, and during the summer, the hot season, the iron expanded because of heating, because of the temperature increase, and it has to go somewhere. When it expands, the length changes. Because of that, as you can see, it is damaged. This is just one simple example of heat effects. We need to understand heat effects. We need to understand thermal physics very well to do well in our lives. The first thing that we will learn about is the zeroth law of thermodynamic. This is very simple law. It is just logic. You don't need math to understand this law. So here you have two systems, system A and system B. If you measure the temperature for system A and it is 22.5 degrees Celsius, and you measure the temperature for system B and it is 22.5 degrees Celsius, this means the two systems are at the same temperature. So if you allow them to touch each other, nothing will happen, right? This is common sense. But if one was hotter than the other, say if A was at 35 degrees, then the heat energy will be transferred from A to B, right? But as long as they are at the same temperature, then no energy exchange will occur. So this tell us something. This tell us that temperature is such an important parameter that we use it to make judgments, okay? So if A is hotter than B, if the temperature here is higher than the temperature there, we know that then heat will flow from A to B, right? So temperature as a parameter, we use it to determine how hot is hot or how cold is cold when we describe objects, okay? Rather than using qualitative statements about hotness or coldness, here with temperature, you will be able to quantify your statement. You will talk with more confidence. You will say that this object is at 22.5 degrees Celsius. Aha. So everyone who understands temperature, who understands the, heat, the unit of temperature Celsius, will understand what you are talking about and will determine for himself or herself how hot or how cold is this object, okay? So this is an easy law to understand, and it is based on logic. This is the formal statement for this law. If objects A and B are separately in thermal equilibrium with a third object C, which is the thermometer in this case, then A and B are in thermal equilibrium with each other. The meaning of thermal equilibrium is that heat will not flow from one side to another side. There is no need for heat to flow. In order for heat to flow from one side to another side, there should be a temperature difference between them. Okay, check your understanding. Two objects with different sizes, masses, and temperatures are placed in thermal contact. Choose the best answer here. Energy travels. Please read, and once you arrived at an answer, share it with me and the class. Should it be from the object at higher temperature to the object at lower temperature? Do we agree with that, class, all of you? Yeah, uh, number three. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So it will move from the higher temperature to the lower temperature. That is the rule. Excellent. I am glad that we are all on the same page. This is common sense. So in order to be able to communicate our ideas to others, 
in order to speak a language that is understood by all, we need to use units that are accepted by all people. In this regard, there are three units for temperature that are used, the Celsius, the Fahrenheit, and the Kelvin. Each unit has some reference, something that makes sense to all. Like the Celsius scale, you have the ice point, water is changed into ice, that is labeled as zero degrees Celsius, and you have the boiling point that is labeled as 100 degrees Celsius. So the change in temperature between the ice point and the boiling point is divided into 100 segment. Each segment is called one degree Celsius. The symbol here, the small circle, is read as a degree. So we read this as 100 degree Celsius. As simple as that. Now, if you want to take the same reference and check it on the Fahrenheit scale, for the Fahrenheit scale, zero Celsius means 32 Fahrenheit, and 100 degree Celsius means 212 degree Fahrenheit. So what is here 100 step for the Fahrenheit, it is 212 minus 32, which is 180 different steps or degrees. Then, in order to understand the Kelvin scale, the third scale for temperature, we need to understand something about the behavior of gas expansion. Consider this system. You have a fixed volume here. Inside that volume, there is gas. And it is connected with this pipe to this U-shaped system. And there is mercury here. There is mercury. If the pressure of the gas was the same as the pressure of the air here, the atmospheric pressure, then the level of mercury in this end will be the same as the level in the other end, and the height difference between the two levels would be zero. However, if you heat this reservoir, if you heat this reservoir, temperature will flow from the hot fluid to the colder gas, and it will raise its temperature. It becomes more energetic. The thermal, the internal energy becomes more and more, and the pressure will increase. So when the pressure increases, it will push down mercury from this end, and this will make mercury goes up in the other end. So now you have a difference in height between the two levels of mercury at the two ends, and this difference, H, is proportional with the temperature of the gas. The greater the temperature, the greater would be the difference. So here, if there is no difference between the two pressures, then you have one point, and then when you increase the temperature to 100 degree, you have a second point, the pressure now, the pressure now has a different value. The change in the pressure between this point and this point, the change in the pressure, it is in fact the weight of this colon of mercury, okay? This is related to 100 degree Celsius. But at zero Celsius, the pressure was not zero. As you can see, the pressure was not zero. So if you continue cooling the gas, you can extrapolate. If you continue cooling the gas, theoretically, 
all these lines will meet at one point. If you repeat this experiment for all kinds of gases, for all kinds of settings, these lines will meet, the extrapolation will meet at one point, and this point is minus 273.15 degree Celsius. This is called the zero Kelvin. This is called the zero Kelvin. When temperature is zero Kelvin, the pressure will be zero. In fact, life will stop at zero Kelvin life will stop because there is no motion all atoms all molecules will be at rest okay they are not moving so zero kelvin has a deeper meaning than just say freezing point or boiling point so that is the reference for the kelvin scale and then zero celsius corresponds to 273.15 Kelvin, and you keep going. So the boiling point, the boiling point, this point, 100 degrees Celsius, corresponds to 373.15 Kelvin. And here, when we use Kelvin, we do not say degree. So degree is only for Celsius and Fahrenheit. But for Kelvin, you just say Kelvin without the word degree. Kelvin is the scale that is used in science and engineering. It is the formal unit for temperature in the SI system of units. Okay. So now we are all educated. We are all in the same page. We are all know about these three scales of temperature. And we know how to convert between them. Okay. So here temperature in Kelvin, you subtract 273.15 to get the equivalent in Celsius. Once you have the equivalent in Celsius, then you can convert from Celsius to Fahrenheit. This graph is just to give us an idea, an order of magnitude about the temperature of certain events. Okay, like the hydrogen bomb, the temperature is 10 to the power 8 Kelvin. The surface of the sun here is something like 1600 Kelvin. Liquid nitrogen, 170 Kelvin approximately. Okay. So Various systems will have various temperature. As I said earlier, water has its unique properties. This is the triple point. Triple point means the point at which you will be able to see the material in the three phases, the solid phase, the liquid phase, and the gaseous phase. Okay, so for water, this occurs when the temperature is 0 0.01 degree Celsius and when the pressure is 0 0.006 atmosphere. That is the triple point where the three phases water coexist. Then if you increase the temperature and the pressure, you may come to liquid phase here. Or if you decrease the temperature, you come to the ice or solid phase. Again, if you increase the temperature and lower the pressure, you will get the vapor or the gaseous phase. This is a nice picture that allows us to translate the temperature between the three scales. So for the Celsius scale, from zero to hundred, this is ice point, this is boiling point or steam point. This corresponds in the Fahrenheit system to 32 to 212, and in the Kelvin scale, 273 to 373. These equations allow us to convert. So this is from Kelvin to Celsius. 
once you have it in Celsius, you multiply by 9 over 5 and add 32, you will get the temperature in Fahrenheit. Or if you have it in Fahrenheit, you subtract the 2 and multiply the result by 5 over 9 to get the temperature in Celsius. As for the change in temperature, if you are converting the change in temperature from Celsius to Fahrenheit, you have this factor, 9 over 5. Okay? So if the temperature, say, is 10 Celsius, 10 Celsius, you multiply 10 by 9, it is 90, divide by 5, it is 18. So 10 Celsius corresponds to 18 Fahrenheit. I am talking about the change in temperature. 